So it turns out there are these three professors. Okay? And these three professors, Helen Pluckrose, James Lindsay, and Peter Bogosian. And they decided to prank all of these stupid academic journals out there. This story is so great. I love it so much. Here is Peter Bogosian explaining what exactly they did to prank these journals. Since approximately June of 2017, I, along with two other concerned academics, Peter Bogosian and Helen Pluckrose, have been writing intentionally broken academic papers and submitting them to highly respected journals in fields that study gender, race, sexuality, and similar topics. We did this to expose a political corruption that's taken hold of the university. By this point, several of these papers have been accepted in highly respected journals, and one that claims that dog humping incidents can be taken as evidence of rape culture has been officially honored as excellent scholarship. I'm not going to lie to you. We had a lot of fun with this project. The, the reviewers are worried that we didn't respect the dog's privacy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the concern. We respected the <laughs> But don't let that lead you to believe that we're not addressing a serious problem. If you have a few minutes, I'll try to explain. Okay, it's so good. It's so good. So what did they do? They submitted all of these insane papers to these feminist and gender studies journals, and they all got printed, and the papers are unreal. So there's the dog park paper you heard him describe there about why dog humping incidents are rape culture. I talked about it on the show. Here, there's another one <laughs> where they wrote a paper. <laughs> Excuse me, it's so good. Oh. They wrote a paper claiming that when a guy privately pleasures himself while thinking about a woman without her consent, in fact, without her ever finding out about it, that he's committed sexual violence against her. That was printed in a queer studies journal. Okay, they argue, they, they wrote a paper arguing that the reason super intelligent AI is potentially dangerous is because it is being programmed. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to give these people a medal. They argue that the reason super intelligent AI is potentially dangerous is because it is being programmed to be masculinist and imperialist using Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and Lacanian psychoanalysis. That's their feminist AI paper. They argue that a fat body is a legitimately built body as a foundation for introducing a category for fat bodybuilding into the sport of professional bodybuilding. <laughs> It went into a journal called Fat Studies. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Oh, that's so good. They they found something called feminist glaciology. Okay, this is a real thing apparently. So they copied the idea and then they wrote a feminist astronomy paper arguing that feminist and queer astrology should be considered part of the science of astronomy, which we will brand as intrinsically sexist. And researchers loved it. Then they wrote a paper about trans people in the workplace. It says men use male preserves to enact dying macho masculinities, dis masculinities discourses in a way society at large won't accept. They published a paper best summarized as, quote, a gender scholar goes to Hooters to try to figure out why it exists. Okay, it's so, it's so great. Defamiliarizing common experiences, pretending to be mystified by them, and then looking for social constructions to explain them. Sure. Oh man, I can't even read this one on the air. Wow. It's, it would be so. <laughs> uh, I'll try to explain this in the most PG rated possible way. Wow, this is gonna be a challenge. So they did a paper on certain toys, implements that are used in times of intimacy, typically by men who are not straight. So the, they asked the question, why don't straight men tend to pleasure themselves via use of these implements that are generally used by gay men? And what would happen if they did? And their paper was printed in Sexuality and Culture when they concluded that men would be less transphobic and more feminist if they allowed themselves to be treated in a way that straight men typically are not particularly fond of. You know, that they try to avoid why we try to avoid going to the proctologist as often as possible. Oh, my God. The, 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 the very best one, of course, the very best one is that they they submitted a paper to the social, the feminist social work journal Affilia. OK, this is what they did. A feminist rewrite of a chapter from Mein Kampf. They literally took a chapter from Mein Kampf. They replaced some of the language with feminist language and they submitted it to Affilia and Affilia printed it. 
okay, is it fair to say that all of this stuff is garbage? That all of these journals are garbage? I think it's pretty fair to say that. I think it's pretty fair to say that. At the time of the publishing, they have seven papers accepted, four of which have been published online. Three more have been accepted without having had time to see the publication through. Seven papers are still in play. Six were retired as fatally flawed. They had four invitations to peer review other papers as a result of their own exemplary scholarship. And one paper that gained special recognition for excellence from gender, place, and culture. That was the dog humping paper. Just spectacular. Just spectacular. I love this. Uh, they said, part three, why did we do this? Because we're racist, sexist, bigoted, misogynistic, homophobic, transphobic, trans-hysterical, anthropocentric, problematic, privileged, bullying, far right-wing, cis-hetero, straight white males, and one female who's demonstrating her internalized misogyny and overwhelming need for male approval. We wanted to enable bigotry, preserve our privilege, and take the side of hate. <laughs> but the real answer is that, obviously they're joking, the real answer is that these things are just jar. They're just junk. Postmodernism is a bag of junk. It's a bag of junk, and they just proved it. This is, this is so much, it, it's basically, a, a stepped up version of that story that, that was floating around for a while from Modern Art Museum, where a guy went to a Modern Art Museum, took off his glasses, put them on the floor, and then just stood there staring at them. And soon there were 100 people crowded around to stare at his glasses on the floor. And he did this for like five minutes. And then he reaches down, picks up his glasses, wipes them off, puts them on, and leaves. Right? So it's basically that, except for academic studies journals. I can't believe that people are upset about the idea of me subsidizing someone to study these topics at college. We should all be for this. Okay, so you know what? That really should have gone in things I like because it is the thing that I like the most of all the things.